Uh, very good. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, in this occasion, I want to show you this, this kind of research focused on modified surfaces in environmental electrochemistry as an alternative to that sustainable development. Uh, we are a center of research in uh, technological development in electrochemistry, exactly as uh, Professor already commented before. We are exactly in the center of Mexico, and uh, we are a public center uh, where we want to vinculate the science with the industry and service. So uh, for this situation and for the, the where we are, uh, we, we have different connections with industry more focus on automotors, uh, aerospace, uh, water, and materials. Uh, additionally, here uh, we have different postgraduate programs in electrochemistry and environmental engineering in the level of master uh, degree and PhD degree. Uh, These are uh, some uh, photos of the different laboratories uh, from the science department, the technological department, and the service laboratories. Uh, we have uh, different services and connection with other uh, institutions here in Mexico and other in Latin America, Asia, and Europe. And uh, of course, you are welcome if someday uh, you want to uh, read here. Uh, in this, uh, as we know, when we study the environmental engineer, in general, uh, it's necessary to comment about the biochemical cycles. Uh, with the relation and the concentration uh, or kind of compounds, uh, in general, uh, if we increase the concentration or change the kinds of uh, elements in, in the nature, we promote the na natural or anthropogenic pollution. That's why now we are uh, in an ecological imbalance. And oh, maybe this is a uh, phone open. I don't know if. You can close, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, for that situation, we have different phenomena like uh, uh, acid rain, greenhouse effect, the depletion of the ozone layer, so uh, erosion, melting of the poles, uh, seeking change in temperature. So, uh, and we uh, taste the different temperature during the day in the different countries, and uh, just because we are in the climate change. So on September 25 uh, of uh, 2015, world leaders adopt a set of global goals to eradicate poverty, protect the planet, and ensure prosperity for all. Uh, so uh, this is the, uh, in this presentation, I want to show uh, the different research that we in involve in these uh, different goals. In electrochemistry, well, we develop different reactions uh, promoting the interchange of electrons. So it's necessary that we uh, construct different surfaces, naked surfaces, or uh, in the many times it's necessary to modify these kind of surfaces to promote different electrochemical reactions um, and sometimes coupled to chemical reactions to promote the interaction and to uh, arrive the different molecules over the surface and promote a different reaction. So uh, when we have some metals uh, in general, uh, the pollutants arrive close to this electrode and uh, generate a passivation. We eliminate all the uh, active sites. And for that reason, it's necessary that we modify these surfaces with some organic or inorganic compounds that uh, promote the compounds right to the surface, make the reactions and the products uh, return to the solution. And uh, this is the idea of mo the modified surfaces. For this reason, it's necessary that we design, construct, uh, characterize the different uh, modified surfaces in order of the application that we want to get that surfaces. Uh, this is a representation of the electrochemical uh, surface. Uh, we need uh, to verify which is the condition of this electrode, the interface that we promote with a modification or the matrix that we, we are using uh, because we can introduce this electrode in the soil, water, or air. And uh, we promote different oxidants over the surface because in general, uh, to remove the pollutants, the, the majority of the reactions, uh, are in oxidation more than reduction. 
So uh, here uh, we, it's necessary that we know about the material and geometry of this kind of electrodes and obtain information about the geometric and electroactive area to promote these uh, electrical sites to make the reactions, verify the roughness, and verify the cleaning and activation of this electrode because we want to uh, work with this kind of electrodes uh, with a lot of years to uh, reduce the cost of these electrodes. Uh, other, uh, the interface and the diffuse layer is inside that we recognize and verify the different electrochemical and absorbent species and promote some other species between the solution or, or air or, or the soil and close to the, to the electrode. And that's why it's necessary that we uh, obtain information about the thermodynamic and kinetic parameters. In solution, or if we have some soil or air, uh, we need to verify if we promote other uh, chemical, chemical or electrochemical reactions uh, in order of the physical chemistry that we work in this system. Uh, that's why we work with different analytical techniques like uh, spectroscopical, microscopical, uh, chromatographical and electrochemical techniques to understand and to have more information about this interface and to obtain the best results. In the laboratory, we work with different techniques to modify this kind of, of electrodes like a painting, dropping, immersion, and electrophoretic. In our experience, uh, we work more with electrophoretic technique painting and immersion. And uh, the selection of this technique depends of, of the kind of electrode, the geometry, and uh, the kind of components that we want to uh, obtain over the surfaces. Uh, for this reason, this, this, this uh, are some of the samples, and this is some uh, uh, surfaces that we work in the laboratory. One of them is glass, other is gold, carbon, and titanium. Glass, gold, and carbon, uh, they are used more for uh, electrochemical detection of the different pollutants uh, in solution. And the, the titanium is used a lot in environmental engineering. Um, the first one, the glass, we work it uh, to, to support the goal number three of the sustainable development, focus on good health and well-being. We just said, uh, in this case, the palm and dendrimers, uh, they are very nice because they have different generations in order of the different functional groups. For the situation, uh, the, uh, we can have in some cases, depends on the pH of the solution, hydrophobic regions and uh, hydrophobic, uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions. And uh, with this uh, characteristic, we can organize, preconcentrate, and protect the surfaces with this kind of organic uh, compounds to promote mechanical stability and avoid passivation of the surface. One of the applications uh, that we use at these surfaces is include uh, titanium dioxide to promote the modification with silans and, and fullerene. And uh, with the time, we construct different composites over the surface uh, with the inclusion of Paman Dendrimer Generation Zero. Uh, we verify the different hours of modification and recognize the electrochemical signal. This is a cyclic voltammetry that we use a lot in the different experiments to verify the, this uh, electronic transference. Uh, as you can see here, this is a peak uh, a characteristic of fullerene. And we obtain with this modification just uh, after nine hours. And we could recognize with this, uh, this peak, uh, which is a chart that we obtain in relation of the concentration of fullerene. Additionally, uh, we verify uh, the absorbance uh, uh, and follow uh, the answer uh, by the presence of the fullerene. And uh, we use the scanning electron microscopy. And you can see here how in at nine hours, uh, the uh, homogeneous surface we obtain with this composite. After this time, uh, the fullerene uh, aggregate and uh, is uh, heterogeneous surfaces. Uh, just in this time, we develop different uh, surfaces and obtain the incident photon to current efficiency is uh, a value that we need to verify 
to use these surfaces like a solar cells. And uh, additionally, the other par parameter is very important is the overall energy conversion efficiency. As uh, you can see here, the organization of the fullerene with the uh, PAM and dendrimer generation zero at night hours, we obtain the highest percentage in these values. Uh, with this time and this organization, we want to uh, obtain uh, layers of fullerene. And for that reason, we uh, design this kind of modified surfaces, one of the dendritic manner, another in the linear manner. And uh, step by step, we construct this uh, filler and, uh, layer over uh, that titanium dioxide. And with the results, uh, was very nice to observe how uh, the uh, dendritic uh, development of the filler and over the surface of titanium dioxide uh, aggregate over the surface. But uh, when we develop this linear uh, organization, after three layers, uh, the material was homogeneous uh, over the surface. After the four layers, uh, they aggregate uh, similar to the dendritic uh, surfaces. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, when we verify the different hours to modify these kind of surfaces, we verify these values of the uh, IPCE and the global uh, percentage. And uh, with the three layers by the organization of this development of the filler and over the surface, we obtain uh, more energy, more percentage, close to a uh, 81 percentage. Other of the surfaces that we work with uh, a lot um, is used, usual, you said uh, with fluids, bio, uh, bio, biological fluids is the gold surface. And at the same way uh, of the last case, uh, we use these surfaces to support the gold tree of the sustainable development. Uh, but in this case, we change the silan by the thiols. Thiols is a molecule that is very easy to modify the gold surfaces or only by immersion. And later, uh, we can connect with the PAM and dendrimers uh, to uh, obtain a covalent link. And uh, we, uh, with this modification, we use different uh, generations on PAM and dendrimer and use the hydrophobic spaces between the PAM and dendrimers to include Prussian blue. Prussian blue, maybe you, you read some information about that. It's, it's very nice because it's a coordination complex. And uh, we have the iron three, iron two, and with a, a sign of uh, link. Uh, it's very important and very easy to, to synthesize. Uh, when we include this kind of, of Prussian blue with the PAM and dendrimers, you can see here how with the highest generation of the PAM, PAM and dendrimer, we obtain these composites over the, the surfaces and increase the concentration of iron 3 and iron 2. When, with this uh, contain and these modified surfaces, we evaluate and detect a, a, a hydro, a hydro peroxide. This is a, an oxidant that is necessary to measure during the electrochemical treatment. And now uh, we talk about a lot about the uh, advanced oxidation processes in water. And this molecule uh, destroys very easily the, the aromatic molecules in water. Uh, that's why it's important this uh, electrochemical detector to verify in neutral conditions the generation, generation of this oxidant. So we compared uh, two solutions. One uh, was of phosphate buffer solution, another of potassium chloride. This is a characteristic uh, element used in water to chlorination. And this is a, an example and simu uh, to simulate what happened in solution and to recognize that I had a peroxide. So uh, as uh, the other examples, we use this generation, generation four, and we obtain uh, the lowest detection and quantification limit to verify this concentration of this oxidant during the different waste water treat. Uh, with the same uh, similar idea, uh, we are working with some uh, wastewater uh, treatment uh, containing pharmaceutical products. Now it's very important by the persistent pollutants in water, and we construct uh, this kind of modified surfaces using different large of the uh, tiles to uh, uh, promote uh, spaces and include fibrosin. Fibrosin is a, a molecule in electrochemistry 
uh, that we can valorate exactly with that oxidation peak and reduction peak, and we can construct calibration curves. But uh, additionally, when we uh, include uh, over the modified surfaces this, this kind of molecule, we can uh, interact with other elements, in this case, uh, beta cyclodextrin, uh, which is other of the molecules that is used, uh, used in different chemical compounds in, in pharmaceutic industry. So uh, with this exercise and these mod modified surfaces, we can uh, obtain the lateral interactions coefficient in the interface. That's pretty nice because we can obtain the coverage and the interaction, supramolecular interaction. Other of the surfaces that we use a lot uh, in different processes is the carbon because uh, this material is very cheap. The importance of this material is how to choose, how to prepare to the different applications. So uh, in the same way, as I told you before, this uh, surface, we use it uh, to detect different molecules. But in this case, we construct uh, the modified surfaces with nanoparticles uh, using uh, the different elements of the platinum group as iridium, osmium, palladium, platinum, rhodium, and ruthenium. Uh, it's necessary to have uh, different solutions of the ions and interact with the dendrimers uh, to the, the object to include and introduce these ions inside of the common dendrimers. And later of the uh, reduction uh, reaction, we can obtain that nanoparticles. Later to eliminate the different ions that they don't uh, construct the nanoparticles, we uh, dilicet the solution and we obtain finally the nanoparticles with the dendrimers. Uh, this is uh, common, uh, all the, the, the name common is the dense uh, by the uh, interaction between the, the PAMAN dendrimers and the nanoparticles. Uh, one of the techniques that we use to verify this inclusion is the uh, ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. And uh, we can obtain a peak, it's a plasmon peak, uh, which is characteristic of this uh, dense. And uh, you can find this peak uh, close to uh, 300 nanometers. And uh, we're constructing the different calibration curves. Uh, we can obtain the permissible uh, constant, which is characteristic. And we can compare with the different papers and other researches. Uh, with this uh, lens, uh, we modify uh, carbon electrode uh, here. This is an electrochemical detector that we connect in a, a high-performance liquid chromatographer. And um, this is uh, this equipment, you, usually you can find with the uh, ultraviolet visible detector. And uh, when the sample uh, introduced in this equipment, uh, you can obtain, in this case, we use a dopamine. Dopamine is important in neurotransmitter. The different studies is necessary to verify uh, sometimes by, by the, uh, to verify Alzheimer or other disease. Uh, and uh, this is the characteristic ultraviolet visible signal of dopamine, close to, to uh, 300 nanometers. And the solution uh, when after to introduce of this uh, spectrophotometer, the sample is, is, it came out of the kidney. But in this occasion, uh, we couple the electrochemical detector and arrive after this spectrophotometric me measure, obtain the electrochemical measure. Before of this signal uh, is similar, as you can see, similar the, the, the chromatograph that we obtain of the dopamine at the same illusion time in 30 minutes. But uh, to apply exactly which is the potential to obtain this signal, because we recognize the concentration in relation of the current, we uh, obtain the uh, cyclic voltammetry. As I told you, it's, it's important to obtain the, uh, this, this signal to verify the potential, which is related to the energy that we need to obtain information about that molecule. And dopamine is, is nice, the cyclic voltammetry. And we apply this potential and obtain this signal similar to ultraviolet visible signal. So uh, we construct the calibration corpse and we observe that uh, with an electrochemical detector, obtain the lowest detection and quantification limit than or ultraviolet visible uh, signal. So, uh, but in this, uh, when we compare the different stents with the different elements, 
we recognize that rhodium was the best to obtain the, the lowest of this detection and quantification limit. The most important in this study was uh, the, that we introduced urine without any pretreatment directly to the chromatographer or somebody. <laughs> and we compare uh, with uh, addition standard or standard addition in the calibration curve. This is the, the real sample. And uh, the slope was the same to the synthetic sample. And this is very nice in another analytical detection because uh, the, we don't have the matrix effect, but the other components of the sample. In contrast, uh, when we obtain the information in the same sample, but using the ultraviolet visible detector, change the slope. So he, here uh, you can see the combator, uh, the signal, and uh, we obtain other information of other mole molecules which interfere in the detection of the PROMA, in contrast of the electrochemical detection. Uh, with this experience, uh, with a collaboration with other institutions, they want to detect dopamine directly in a uh, rat's brain. So uh, to introduce uh, the modified electrode, we use a graphite. This is from a pencil, and it's very cheap. Uh, but in this case, we modify this dense with platinum. So we introduce uh, with uh, experts uh, how to manipulate these this, uh, animals introduce this modified uh, detector, and we construct an uh, equipment to recognize directly. Uh, we introduce the, calibrate, the electronic calibration curve and the electrochemical calibration curve, and directly we obtain the, the data, like a glucosa detector, in this case, dopamine detector, of the concentration of the rats. The, these uh, rats uh, were alive. So uh, they move it, and we recognize how change the concentration of dopamine. And the last uh, uh, surface that I want coming here is a uh, titanium. This surface is very useful in environmental engineering. And uh, with these uh, modified surfaces, we support the goal number six, uh, focus on clean water and sanitation. Uh, here, uh, you can find different modified surfaces, the best for the generation of uh, hydroxyl radicals to uh, destroy organic molecules in water is a boron dopate dime. But uh, these electrodes are very expensive. That's why uh, we modify other uh, surfaces. Uh, there, there are some commercial uh, electrodes, uh, which is uh, related with dimensional stable anodes. Uh, using a uh, different trans transition metal uh, oxides. In this case, in our group, we use the ruthenium and the iridium uh, dioxide because they are uh, active anodes. And the properties that they have is our potential to the oxygen evolution, electrocatalysis to electrochemical oxidation reaction, interaction with hydroxyl radicals and electrochemical conversion to organic compounds. That's the main goal of using this kind of surfaces. The, the surfaces that we study a lot is iridium dioxide, is more common in our group. And we include the tantalium dioxide because this, is, this uh, compound is important to have in, in, in presence of the iridium dioxide because uh, uh, the, the, this compound uh, promotes hydration and promote more concentration or, and generation of hydroxyl radicals. This uh, electrode, in, uh, we, uh, the, the manner that we construct this electrode, increase the roughness and active sites and promote the generation of hydroxyl radicals. It remove uh, the percentage or, or the removal efficiency is more than 80 percentage. They, they are reposable and reduce the time and inversion cost. So uh, with these electrodes, we apply in the uh, destruction of hydrocarbons and pharmaceutical products. The last one is very important actually because uh, they are the uh, per, uh, uh, persistent uh, pollutants in wastewater. The conventional uh, wastewater treatment is not uh, uh, enough to remove these kind of molecules. That's why it's necessary to develop new technology to, re uh, to remove or destroy these pharmaceutical products. Uh, here, we use the different modifications, the electrophoretic painting and immersion uh, modification. And you can see here, the electrophoretic is, uh, we generate a mesoporous surface. 
And this is interesting because we have a three dimension of the different uh, electroactive sites and increase the concentration of iridium in comparison of the painting and immersion uh, method, as you can see here. Uh, we obtain again the cyclic voltammetry with this kind of electrodes. As you can see, that uh, using the electrophoretic methods, we increase the potential in the oxidation zone. Uh, with this increase, we can promote a generation of hydroxyl radicals. And addition of this modification, we increase the active time life in comparison with other relations in presence of ruthenium or uh, relations with minus concentration of iridium. And of course, I, so uh, there is some phone open. I don't know what. <laughs> Please, if you can close it. Uh -huh. Yeah, Professor, ready? I continue? Yeah, please, please continue. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I request everyone to mute, so yeah, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So uh, with this relation of iridium and tantalium, we increase this active uh, surface, and this very nice uh, and very, uh, which is a, a lot of time. Uh, to, to use this electrode, first, we uh, developed a simulation in console program. Uh, and compared to reactors, very common or, or in, uh, in these days, because uh, this is um, uh, cross flow, and the electrodes is per in perpendicular manner that the, the fluid. Other uh, reactor is a parallel flow, and the fluid is in the same way of the current uh, inside of the electrodes. So uh, this is after the simulation, you can see here how it's, it's better to choose this parallel uh, flow, this, this reactor. So the, we construct this reactor uh, with a capacity of 24 liters, and we introduce these modified surfaces. The interesting uh, was uh, that uh, was uh, what the, the, the main goal that we, we want to, to work with this reactor is uh, to compare how uh, which is the function of the modified surfaces with electrophoretic methods and painting methods. As you can see here, how increase uh, the um, uh, efficiency of total organic carbon percentage and the uh, chemical organic demand increase uh, better the, uh, using this electrophoretic anode, that painting anode. That's why it's important, these modifications, and uh, we obtain a pattern here in Mexico. Uh, so um, using these electrodes, we uh, construct and obtain this pilot system, uh, and this is the system that we began in this occasion. We continue with this system, and now uh, actually we are uh, developed the wastewater treatment uh, the, of uh, the water is from uh, hemodialysis. The problem of hemodialysis is uh, the high concentration of organic compounds and salts. So uh, we include here electrocoagulation, which is a method uh, to reduce this organic matter in solution. And we compare two electrodes that is common to, to verify in literature, the iron and aluminum. When we verify these electrodes, is, uh, you can see here how the al aluminum reduce the, the size of the electrode, but uh, we promote more slush. So this is a big problem. And uh, in comparison, uh, when we use the iron electrode, you can see here some corrosion, and it's necessary to generate uh, this iron to uh, promote the uh, flux and later uh, coagulation to remove by sedimentation. And uh, this is the, the kind of water that we obtain after uh, to choose the electrocoagulation and electrooxidation. And later, uh, we just uh, filters, we separate these particles suspended in solution. And uh, we obtain using uh, like a, a reference, amoxicillin is a molecule that you can find in different papers. And uh, there is some uh, mechanism of reactions to understand how to remove these this kind of molecules. This is a pharmaceutical product. So uh, with these experiments, we obtain 100 percentage of remotion after the couple of electrocoagulation and electrooxidation. So with this idea, we include now uh, not only electrooxidation reactor, we include the electrocoagulation reactor. And this is the, the, uh, the pilot system that we are uh, simulate now uh, to verify which is the best uh, conditions to uh, take this plant uh, and uh, Use in clinics or hospitals in Mexico. Uh, other idea uh, to use this kind of titanium, uh, modified titanium, 
is, is to support the goal number 15, the life on land. And this is interesting that the, how I, I knew Professor Reddy <laughs> is to the, develop electrokinetic treatment. This is a cartoon on what happened in the electrokinetic treatment. We can include the electrodes inside of some solution or directly in the soil. We use it, the anodes, in this case, uh, the modify with iridium and tantalum, as I commented before, and uh, with a contrail electrode of uh, cathode uh, titanium. We introduce uh, in soil and promote differ different phenomena in, in the soil. Uh, one is the electromigration of anions. It depends on the quantity of, of ions that we have in, in the soil. Uh, there is uh, this electromigration of anions uh, close to the uh, anode and cations uh, close to the, to the cathode. And additionally, if we have some organic compounds in soil, uh, we promote electroosmosis by the help of the, this movement of ions. And additionally, uh, we promote the electrophoresis. In our case, we observe that we promote the movement of bacteria uh, that uh, is like a, a colloids uh, between the different sporos in, in, in the different particles of soil. Additionally, uh, we can uh, generate the electrolysis of water uh, close to the anode. And sometimes we obtain a pH two by the generations of protons and oxygen. And close to the cathode, we generate a hydrogen and a hydrocyl ions. And that's why it's on occasions we obtain a pH nine. And between both anodes, anode and cathode, we obtain a pH seven. So with this idea, we had worked here in different soils uh, polluted with radionuclides and stethylation fluids, arsenic, mercury, sodium, and hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbon is important. Uh, and here in Mexico, as you know, we have different refineries and we have a lot of uh, soils polluted by this kind of compound. So uh, we began with only 25 grams. We verified the literature and construct this guy or reactor. Uh, we, we have uh, perpendicular electrodes with uh, uh, respect to the soil, and we include a solution to remove the pollutant. In that time, it was interesting because we compared with other uh, uh, groups of research that they work here in Mexico, uh, washing, including Triton X140. Uh, uh, other group work with bioremediation, including solid culture, and we work here in CDTEC with electromediation in basic conditions to remove hydrocarbons. Uh, we compare these systems, as you can see here, how increased the percentage of remotion of hydrocarbon using electroremediation. That was a good news for us because we verified that at the time that we used to remove hydrocarbon was less in comparison of the other techniques. Additionally, uh, we verify the toxicity because uh, any time uh, we can, when we want to clean the soil, a uh, pollute the soil, as this is the case of Triton, increase that toxicity. The uh, solid culture in general, because we use it, uh, waste of, of the agriculture, reduce the toxicity. But electromedication uh, was similar to bioremediation, and this is a laboratory condition. Anyway, we continue with the uh, electromedial soil and verify uh, how grow the seed. In this case, uh, we include a bean seed. And you can uh, see how with electromediation grow our seed in comparison of the bioremediation and washing technique. So uh, with this result, we continue and we change of uh, 25 grams to 500 grams and uh, compare the different arrangement of electrodes that we find in patents in different countries or, or papers. Uh, this is the technique or face-to-face, -face, alternate and circular uh, configuration. So you can see here how with a circular configuration of the electrodes, increase the remotion close to 15 percentage, only with four hours of treatment. Uh, with this condition, uh, we prepare the on-site pilot and directly in the refinery, we approve the in situ pilot using the same configuration and in order of, of the quantity of soil, we uh, work with the, the size of the electrodes, but the same configuration, the circular configuration. 
Additionally, uh, we wanted to uh, verify that all the pollutants uh, destroyed directly in the soil, but not any time destroyed directly with this kind of electrodes. So we include this annular zone to uh, collect all the, the water that we include to, to develop the electroremediation. And we pump in this, this water to trade in other systems. And uh, when we characterize this kind of soil, electromagnetic soil, it was very nice to observe how uh, in the middle cell, be uh, middle cell between the anodes and the cattle, the uh, amino acids, carboxylic acids, carbohydrates, polymers, and other compounds, uh, there were, they were uh, homogeneous in concentration uh, in comparison of the polluted soil. Additionally, uh, there are some groups uh, who recognize the breeding of the uh, bacteria that we have in the soil, uh, obtain information about the concentration of carbon dioxide. And uh, here in the middle cell, we uh, uh, obtain a similar condition of the clean soil uh, and a, a huge respiration in comparison of the polluted soil. Additionally, and more interesting was how uh, we observed that increased the total number of bacteria in the middle cell at the same time of the fungi. Uh, with this idea, we understand how uh, the uh, electromediation separates the particles of soil and promotes the liberation of all the microorganisms uh, that uh, before of the pollution contained between the, that particles. We uh, obtain other information, other experiments about the, the size of the particle. And this is uh, the reason that we understand now how is that this liberation. That's why it's functional uh, to uh, develop some bioremediation later of electroremediation. With these ideas, uh, we construct, this is a pilot system. This is the we use in situ and on-site uh, system it is for one uh, square meter of so polluted soil. soil. And uh, in some refineries, uh, we have the problem that uh, there are some tubes inside of the soil. So it's, it's not a good idea to include electrons because we promote corrosion in that tubes of the refinery. So uh, by that reason, it's necessary to remove the polluted soil and contain some electrochemical reactors like this. And uh, we use it, these reactors, and we obtain the patents here in Mexico. And the, the wastewater contains the, the residual hydrocarbons. We use the Fenton plant. This is of the technological department, and this is mobile, mobile and uh, we can use it to, to connect this uh, electroremediation system with this uh, wastewater treatment. With this, uh, uh, this process, we reduce, uh, we, we can reduce the, the water after the treatment because we, uh, we uh, are in the, in the parameters that accept in, in the laws in Mexico. Uh, between the pH of, of 5 and 10, uh, we reduce the chemical organic demand less than uh, 200 milligrams per liter and reduce the toxicity. That's why uh, this water uh, we can use in industrial or in the same treatment. Additionally, uh, when we prove uh, these uh, systems, we wanted to, to follow the, uh, the remediation of the soil, including filter remediation. So uh, we use it, the soil to grow bean, wheat, and corn, and in the electromediated soil, increase the plants to grow in good, uh, good matter. So uh, with this idea, we have uh, other uh, projects uh, of the innovation here in Mexico, and uh, we connect the different uh, configurations, circular configurations, uh, and to uh, electromediate one hectare in a refinery directly. So uh, we just the plant of the wastewater treatment. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, some photos of how was a connection, the electrical connection and the hydraulic connection to uh, humidify the, the soil and uh, electromediate. These activities were developed only in one week. We worked four hours each day and moved all the, the, the infrastructure to electromediate, electromediate this area. After uh, that we uh, developed this treatment for one week, we obtained a reduction on efficiency in the remotion of hydrocarbons of 94%. Uh, 
And later, uh, we wanted to uh, continue with the remediation of soil and we include corn, uh, corn beans. So uh, after a three, two months, you can see here, uh, this is uh, the preliminary soil, the pollen soil uh, in zero months. After one month, the corn, uh, corn plants grow close to 50 centimeters. And the distribution of the plants uh, was more homogeneous in contrast to the polluted soil. Here, uh, the, well, the, the polluted soil was black and smelled a lot of hydrocarbons, and the electromediate soil uh, was brown. In order of the ephodologist, uh, there uh, comment that when we observe this uh, brown color is that uh, we recuperate the soil. We have uh, natural soil. So this is another uh, demonstration about the electromediation. So um, we continue with uh, our research and with the results. We wanted uh, to increase uh, uh, grow plants. And, and with these ideas, we support that goal two of zero hunger. And we use the different uh, plants. In this case, we compare different metabolism. In this case, it's, uh, C3. C4 and CAM, like uh, Arabidopsis italiana, Triticum, eh, SPP, Lolium perenne, C mice, Echinocactus grusoni, uh, and Maminaria matilde. This, uh, after the experiments, we observed an increase in homogeneity in the growth of the plants, uh, emergency of true leaves, steam diameter, dry bus, uh, biomass, and other edaphological uh, properties like um, a cationic exchange capacity, electrical conductivity, and organic matter. These are uh, some examples, and this is the Arabidopsis that we began in the laboratory with agar. We uh, include some seeds uh, between the electrodes using the modified electrode, as I told you before, iridium dioxide with tantalium dioxide. And uh, uh, we observed that after uh, 40 days, the secondary uh, roots grow close to the anodes. And by the promotion of the different uh, oxidants and uh, uh, is the sol solubilization of nutrients and increase that growth. Other example here is the CMAs. We compare the iridium dioxide with the ruthenium dioxide and increase in this case with ruthenium the uh, steam radical sheets and stock. And after uh, 11 days, you can see here how grow in our laboratory and the biomass in radical and the root. And uh, later uh, by the, um, uh, that time that we can observe how grow uh, cucumber, we use them and the electrodes of iridium dioxide and after 40 days, uh, you can see here how grow the different sheets and uh, the biomass close to the anode and other properties of the root length and of course the germination in comparison of the farming. Uh, with this uh, exercise, we develop uh, a system, uh, a pilot system here in CDTEC. That's why uh, it's anthrosol because here we have some uh, buildings and for that reason reduce the nutrients in the soil. Anyway, we construct and develop these experiments and you can see here how the, the sheets uh, here after the electro farming grow green and uh, the insects didn't eat these sheets in comparison without that electrophilm. So our propose of this experiment is uh, with this electro farming, we can reduce electrochemicals and uh, uh, obtain better soil, uh, reduce the uh, eroded soil increase the percentage of seed germination, profitability of crops, agricultural production, cap, uh, uh, carbon dioxide uh, capture that is actual now for different projects and increase the cost benefit relation. This is the evaluation that we are developing now with this system. And uh, additionally, fortunately, one productor uh, in Guadalajara is close uh, maybe two, three hours after here Querétaro. Uh, uh, this is a, a private uh, company, but uh, we can develop a major scale in the electro farming in blueberries. And they produce blueberries in semi hydroponics and soil. And we uh, include the electrodes to promote the, the growth 
or blueberries and follow during uh, the last year and verify the floral bulbs, charters, flowers, fruits, and chlorophyll. And in this, in this case, in this uh, company, they use it a lot, uh, uh, plant growth promoting bacteria. They, they, this is a product that the other center of research developed uh, with this company. And now we are connecting with that institute and our uh, institution, and we uh, combine that biological stimulation with electrical stimulation. And uh, here, and this is one of the graphs that we obtain of the results. The combination of the biological uh, stimulation with electrical stimulation increase the root and C. And this is, uh, we, we hope other uh, results and good news, I hope. <laughs> and the last idea and the last research that we are working now is focused to support the goal uh, 13 related with uh, climate action. And here we want to uh, use this modified electrodes to remove pollutants from the air. In the uh, pollution air, uh, you can find different technologies to remove uh, particles uh, suspended or uh, uh, volatile organic compounds or uh, only use filters. One of the electrochemical techniques that you can find is the electrostatic precipitator to remove particles uh, that there, there are in the air or, or organic compounds. So uh, we are developing, uh, developing different experiments with toluene, benzene, ethyl benzene, and helium. And uh, here I show you the results of toluene. Uh, we use it in this occasion. Uh, we compare the iridium dioxide with tantalium uh, pentoxide. But uh, the most interesting for us is how to uh, modify surfaces of titanium, but now with titanium dioxide nanotubes. And we are constru uh, construct these uh, modified surfaces directly from the titanium. We grow the, the nanotubes and we are comparing because we, we want to obtain a photo electrochemical reactor. That's why we use it now uh, titanium dioxide nanotubes because they are a good semiconductors to uh, uh, develop the photoelectrochemical reactions. And so uh, with the different metals, uh, we modify surfaces uh, with a methodology of one wire, two, three, four, and we observe that we obtain these nanotubes after one hour. So you said that these electrodes uh, we incorporate uh, with the idea that we uh, we apply in the wastewater treatment. Now we are applying here uh, to, to remove uh, volatile compounds. And this is an electrochemical reactor. Uh, we uh, add an absorption reactor if necessary because and is very reported in the, in the literature that as you said, uh, like a carbon surfaces remove a lot of organic compounds in there and other reactor with a photolytic reactor, uh, just the, the light uh, close to 300 nanometers. And this is important because we want to uh, obtain a 100 percentage that we have now in laboratory. Uh, if we observe these graphs only used in separate uh, form, the different reactors is uh, only a remotion of toluene close to 50 uh, percentage. But if we make this combination, we obtain 100 percentage of toluene just now in the conditions that we have in laboratory. And now we want uh, to, to get a better configuration of the reactor. This is only laboratory, but we want to, to have a more complete reactor in this idea. So finally, along with, with all the examples that I come in, in today, I want to tell you that here in CDTEC, we modify surfaces with the idea to innovate uh, since uh, basic science and uh, to promote the development of pilot systems and with the idea to, uh, to develop technology to social appropriation. With uh, the main object now is uh, to support the sustainable development goals. And so uh, I want to acknowledge any time to the pre-graduate, graduate, and post-graduate students who, who helps all the time in the different projects. Of course, uh, our colleagues in the national institutions and international institutions. And of course, Professor Reddy for your kind invitation and for your beginning of your webinars. And thank you so much. <laughs>
Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Erica. Excellent presentation. And of course, I expected this, <laughs> knowing you. Uh, so I, I'm 